So in this video, we're going to talk about the EG4 6500EX and the original MPP LV6548 and how difficult it is to get these systems approved through your local inspector or regulatory body for electrical code enforcement. So first, let's talk about the UL listing on this device. This is UL1741 by TUV. And that company is a third party that certifies equipment to a UL standard. And the UL standard that this is certified to is UL1741. But I just found out that the original LV6548 has the exact same certificate. And it's on the sticker on the side. It says TUV conforms to UL standard 1741. And then I found out that people have passed inspections with these units as well. And I had no idea. But the EG4 model is $300 cheaper and has a higher PV input voltage limit. So that's why most people would still buy this one regardless. Also, the old model had MC4 adapters on the PV input. And supposedly that's not good. In some places, you will not pass inspection with these adapters. But some people have, so it's somewhat confusing. Now the next point is that all of these inverters, this EG4, the MPP, GrowWatts, none of these are on the approved equipment list for California. So if you specifically live in California, you will probably not pass inspection with any of these. So I'm creating a new website on my page with an actual recommendation, and that's going to be the Soul Arc. The Soul Arc costs about three times as much as this model, but you will pass inspection anywhere. All you have to do is buy a Solark and then hire a local electrician to install it with your solar array and that's it. It will always pass inspection if it's professionally installed. Now for my recommendation with these inverters, and I love these things, I love the MPPs, I run them all the time, but I'm going to consider them off-grid inverters. Now this system can legally back up your home with a critical loads transfer switch. And that's what you use to run critical loads with a generator. So you can treat this system as a generator, but again, you need to hire a professional to add that transfer switch to your panel and make sure it is code compliant. Now let's do an advanced discussion of the ground neutral bond in these systems. And I finally found a solution and it came from the members on my forum. So there is a small screw in each unit and that creates the ground neutral bond at the AC output when the inverter is on. And because the AC output of these two units is in series, there is some argument that you will have current on ground and that can be a danger because you can actually have a difference of potential when current is flowing between the two cases and that could potentially create a shock hazard. And you don't want current on ground in general as people know. So the solution is a single ground neutral bond. And if you have multiple inverters in parallel and you want a scalable system, you want that bond to be in the main panel and nowhere else. So what I did is I took apart this inverter and I removed the ground neutral bond. And then I tested for current on ground and I also tested if the ground neutral bond was present. So I disconnected the grounds on the panel for both inverters and it fixed the ground neutral bond on this one. But when I connected everything back together again and I fired up the inverters, the ground neutral bond was still present. And that's obviously my fault. I wasn't thinking about the whole circuit and the neutrals are still connected. So yeah, if there's a bond anywhere in any of the inverters for a split phase configuration, you will still have the ground neutral bond over there. But what I did next is I removed the ground neutral bonding screw from this unit as well and it fixed it. So there is no connection between ground and neutral and the single bond for this whole system is in this panel only. And that's how it should be. So now all of the cases are at the same reference potential. I'm gonna ask Signature Solar and other companies to actually have a diagram showing how to do this because it is a solution that works. And the credit goes to my forum members at diysolarforum.com for finding this solution. This is what other people are doing and it does seem to work. So that's really nice. Now, if you use bypass mode with these inverters, you need to keep the grounds and neutral separate. This is considered a sub panel if you use bypass in these units. You cannot forget that. Now something else you guys need to know about passing inspection is this PV connection is not going to fly with any inspector. You need to have conduit coming all the way to the PV input and probably hire a professional to mount those solar panels as well. If you mess up that mounting connection on your roof and the PV conduit, you're going to have some problems and that's high voltage DC. So yes, hire a professional with mounting your solar panels and doing the input connection because it's pretty dangerous. 
Now the next topic I want to talk about is your inspector. If you have a very lax county regulation and your inspector doesn't really care, you could probably get by with these just fine and run your whole house and then use the AC input as your grid connection no problem. But you need to check with your inspector first and what they specifically need because it can vary quite significantly. Some of the comments that I see in some of the forum posts, people will say that they passed inspection, but they would not pass inspection anywhere that I've lived. So it really depends on where you live. And if you're friends with the inspector, if you live in a very small town and the guy's pretty kicked back, you might be able to do a lot more than other places. At least that's what I'm being told. I've never lived in a small city before. Now for off-grid, these are fantastic and I love every Every type of LV6548, including these. But if you want to pass inspection, you need to spend the extra money and get a Solark. You will have zero headaches, it has rapid shutdown, has a transfer switch built in, and Solark's customer service has engineers that can remotely change the settings. So that's what you're paying for. The support and the certifications in UL listing is fantastic. And that inverter is approved by California, which is very difficult. But it costs like three or four times as much as these. So if you want to pass inspection, you need to pay the money and get it done right. Now some electricians might have a tough time installing these units, especially with low voltage DC systems. A lot of them are not trained on that topic but they can install a solar arc safely. You just give them the solar arc, tell them that you want solar on your roof and they'll install it. Now something else I wanna mention is the conductor size that I recommended for EG4 inverters. You can use six gauge wire and that's what Signature Solar recommends and it will work fine for most people. But if you're pulling 13,000 watts from these inverters all day long, you need to use four gauge wire. But for everyone under 10,560 watts, you'll be just fine with six gauge wire. Actually, some people can still use six gauge if you use a high temp rated insulation, but if you're using whatever you got at Home Depot, yeah, um, four gauge for continuous duty, 13,000 watts, then under 10,500, you can use a six gauge for continuous. Now I'm gonna have a new page on my website if you wanna learn more about the Solark. And we're gonna have a lot more information about that unit in the next couple of months. But these are fantastic for off-grid use and I'm gonna still recommend them forever for off-grid use because they're great, especially for the price. And yeah, I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in the next one, bye.